In the last video I posted, I talked about how I had fried an Arduino and ended up like for like replacing it. And I kind of assumed that once I'd done that, my layout would work as flawlessly as it had done before, because it was just a like for like replacement. But to my frustration and annoyance, it didn't. And it, um, old errors in, and issues that, that I thought I'd sorted six months ago suddenly resurfaced. Principally, they were that at very occasionally when instructed to change, a turnout wouldn't change and it seemed quite random and I, I um, yeah, it was something I experienced six months ago and I, I thought I had resolved. So I was pretty frustrated about that so I decided this time I was going to resolve it for good and I was going to really understand where the issues were so I took a real deep dive into CMRI and uh, RS485 and how they work and it, it, it was a beneficial journey I think in the end and I did film it so I'm, I, it, it's all going to be edited af after this but it, it's it, it became a, a, a real kind of inspection of what happens that's the, the the start of my layout really that's there's a a sprog 3 on the top of that raspberry pi and that controls the dcc side of things but also the raspberry pi has jmri and cmri on it and that's what controls the peripherals on on the layout the the, the points lights and sensors or whatever and the way it does that is through an RS-485 bus and it comes out, it starts in that, that pipe comes out through a USB adapter and it comes into this USB to RS-485 adapter. The adapter then has those uh, pink and purple cables coming out which are the RS-485 bus and it has that grey cable which is a, a shared ground starting from there. Those cables then go right away around the loft, there's a, a, a node there with an Arduino on the other side of that board, right up to the end over there, across. And back down the other side again, there's the, the trouble Arduino was that one that was kept, kept being fried, that's down there. And then there's another node down here uh, as well. And this, at that point, was the end of the RS-485 bus. What I needed to know is if instructions were, well, first of all, were instructions being sent out on the RS-485 bus? And if they were, why were they not being received if they were being received and why were they not being executed and in the end I thought the best way to do that was to start inspecting the data on the RS-485 bus itself independently of these nodes and in order to do that what I decided to do was uh, extend the bus so the bus now uh, moves continues after this node and it comes right back to the start of the the uh, well, back to the original corner, I guess. And there's now an additional node sat on this bus. But this isn't a normal uh, CMRI node. This is independent of CMRI, and it's simply a, a, an Arduino that's sat monitoring the RS-485 bus and outputting to Serial, to the console, what it sees. So it says... For every data packet it encounters, it says which node address that packet was intended for and what data was in that packet. And it was this that really helped me finally get to the bottom of how CMRI works, how RS-485 works and where the problems were. Back here on the Raspberry Pi then, I need to do my best to debug what's going on and there are a few tools I can use. The first thing is the metrics. I was on these earlier and still, strangely, there are absolutely no timeouts, which surprises me. There, communication is two ways between CMRI and all of the Arduino uh, CMRI nodes. There is the, the poll. Now poll is CMRI here sending out a request for current status from uh, any of the any and all of the Arduino nodes, and it sends them a, a good few of them every second. I don't know how many. So it, it's it, and that's where sensor information comes back. So it only starts sending those polls if it knows that there are sensors on the particular Arduino on the particular CMRI node, and if it knows there are sensors because they're configured in JMRI, it will continually poll that node for status of its sensors and the CMRI set bit command that, that, that we use in the Arduino sketch is the bit that changes that data so you detect that a, a, a micro switch has been pressed in you use CMRI set bit whatever it was to uh, set byte to 
um, change the state of that, change the data, and then when the Arduino Next responds to a poll from CMRI, it sends the updated status of that uh, that, that micro switch together with all other sensors because it sends everything at one in one go back. And if for whatever reason any of the any of the nodes, any of the Arduino's on this on the RS four eight five bus were not receiving those timeouts or not and not receiving those polls or not responding to them, that would appear as timeouts here. And because there are no timeouts here, every single poll that's being sent out and there are countless amounts of them per second is being responded to. Which makes it even stranger that some instructions that are being sent out are not being carried out because it appears that the communication is good. There are no errors. So I'm also going to pull up the monitor. And the monitor shows all of these, uh, there are lots of receives, but I think it records polls as well. And I think we can filter it. So uh, if we filter packets, uh, we do want all nodes. We don't want initialize. We don't want polls. Let's take read off as well in case that's, so there we go, this is good. So now all it's going to record in here is transmits and a transmit happens when we try to change a set of points. So if I click here, there's the transmit and I'm just going to keep clicking these now until I hear that a set of points hasn't moved and I've clicked the button and I'm going to see if there was a transmit here. So having stood there for a while clicking and clicking those sets of points and waiting for the transmits to appear, I couldn't actually recreate the error, but I do know it's still there. So when I was clicking the set of points, I was seeing the transmit. And the transmit is on the CMRI monitor side and, and, and that transmit log happens before, effectively before the message gets sent out onto the RS485 bus, which is through that, that blue thing there. And I kind of know that when it doesn't move, that transmit's going to appear because I've done that before. The, what I don't know is what happens to that data after it goes out on the RS-485 bus. All I know, once that transmit's appeared on the screen, that it's probably gone throughout that, but or it's gone out through that, but I don't know what's happened to it after that, and I know the set of points hasn't moved. And I kind of know, because it was working for six months, so I kind of know that, that provided the Arduino, I've, I've replaced the Arduino, I've replaced the Max 485 uh, TTL module. I kind of assume they're okay, because they knew and I've replaced them. And I sort of know everything, the other side of that's okay, because first of all, I have logging on the Arduino. So if the, if the Arduino does receive the instruction to move the set of points, it outputs that to its console log. And I know that from previous testing six months ago, and I had this exact same problem, the transmit appears on that screen, but the Arduino doesn't log that it received the instruction to change the set of points. So I kind of know because of that that the that the, the fault isn't further on the Arduino chain. It's not in the motor. It's not in the uh, in in the, the the driver board because I know the Arduino never received the instruction to, to to change the set of points. So what I need to know is what happened to that instruction between it going out on that adapter there, that, that the start of the RS-485 bus, what happened to it? Why didn't it get to the Arduino? And in order to, to troubleshoot that more, what I've decided to do is add a new node to the RS-485 bus. It's not going to be a normal CMRI node in that it's not going to drive anything, it's not going to drive any points, lights, anything like that. It's not going to have any sensors attached to it. But it's going to be address independent. So what it's going to do is going to sit there, just sit on the bus, and every instruction, every set instruction that it picks up on the RS-485 bus, it's going to output to its console monitor and it's going to say what address the instruction was aimed for, which node, 1, 2 or 3, and also what the, the data was associated with it as well. And what I'm trying to, to achieve in that is, is, is to, I guess, test the quality of the RS-485 cabling, the, the cabling I used for the bus. Because what I want to know is if that Arduino that was meant to set, change the set of points, node 2, whichever one it was, didn't change the set of points and didn't receive an instruction to change the set of points, did the instruction get corrupted? Did it get lost on the bus because the quality of the cabling is not good enough? So in order to do that, I'm going to have to get back into code. 
back on my little test set up in my office then and I'm straight back to more of Mad Leach's work as Michael K. Adams did Michael D. K. Adams here. He wrote the uh, Arduino CMRI module and the um, Auto 485 module that anyone who does the kind of stuff I'm doing with Arduinos and model railways is very likely to be, be using. Um, in deciding that I was going to create something that would monitor all uh, CMRI traffic <coughs> excuse me on the RS485 bus I considered learning how all of the CMRI data packets work and how to uh, uh, decrypt them and, and all that kind of stuff uh, but very quickly decided that it was much quicker and much lazier for me to just take the work that, that uh, Michael had done and um, adapt it so that um, it would work instead of being a, a receiver of CMRI instructions and passing them on to, to various bits of hardware it would simply read all the instructions and, and output the ones I was particularly interested in to the, the monitor so very very much from this, this code I'm not claiming with, with this thing that I've written here to have actually written it it, it really is just the, the code that was um, on the screen before on the github library here it all is again with just uh, lines that add Kind of debug output really at various points in the in the receipt of of CMRI data, um, and the idea of it is here instead of acting on any instructions, it simply outputs them to the monitor. The other thing is it doesn't ignore anything that's not for its own node address. It it tells in the output it it declares which node any instruction was for and at the minute I'm in, interested in set instructions polls are being responded to that's all fine so what I'm really interested in is is what happens when I click to change a point when it goes out onto the RS485 network why doesn't it get to the node that it's meant to and why doesn't that turnout change so the first thing I need to know is that it actually does go out onto the RS485 network so this is on my test system but uh, nevertheless I'm gonna I've got a few bits of test data here and it kind of proves that it works um, so here I've got that there are three nodes on this test two nodes sorry on this test system numbers one and two and there are two lights on node one and there's one light on node two so I'm going to set this off with its debug. If the debug window is open, everything's working, but at the minute there's nothing on the debug output. The idea is when I click a light, which is the same as a, a turnout really, it's an instruction to a, 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 a node to turn something on and off, the monitor picks up that something happened on the RS485 network. So it was a set, it was intended for address one, data was one and um, I, I think the, these these data items here can be can contain eight binary bits I think they're, they're bytes so four eights are 32 so it's probably set up as a 32 output node which is why there are um, um, four of these lines here but I'm only interested in the first one and it's it's become a one which is kind of correct because only this this LED on it is it only this LED is on but if I turn on the second LED on this node get more output and now it's one one because one represents the, the, the leftmost one represents item two if you like and the rightmost one item one so if I was then to turn LED one off you see now the leftmost one is on second most one is off because the the rightmost one is off because that that uh, and this is obviously binary output here um, and then if I go down to node 2 and turn that one on see I've now got an instruction for address 2 um, and data is 1 again because there's only one light on there so for if, if I keep adding um, lights to say node 1 it's going to start looking more and more like binary it's going to be 1 0 1 1 1 up to 8 and then so the first 8 lights I would add on here would go in this would end up being a full byte and then if I add number nine then this one becomes number one and, 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 and so on until all 32 uh, 
bits in this data packet are, or these data packets are full. So this seems to be working in test. I now need to go up and effectively set up a new node on my RS485 network upstairs and then start monitoring what's happening up there. Just for completeness then, this is how the Arduino's wired up that I was just using in on the computer over there. Um, the computer has a USB to RS-485 dongle plugged into it. Pink and purple cables are the RS-485 bus going into the 485 module. 485 modules plugged into serial 1 on the Arduino. And then the Arduino is plugged. Oh, and uh, because I was lazy and I couldn't um, be bothered to... to fused two wires together it's actually got different de and re pins but that's obviously configured in the in the sketch and then usb back into the computer so effectively those two windows uh that are still still up there were creating a loop in that i was clicking on a light here that was going down through there into the rs485 module into serial one the sketch was picking the bits it was interested in, the set commands, and it was sending them through the serial zero, serial output, uh, into the console monitor, so through the USB cable, back into the computer, and onto the leftmost window there. Back up in the loft then, this is node three, this is where everything terminates. So this is the ground bus cable that comes all the way around. Um, and terminates in the, the ground socket on, on this Arduino and somewhere there'll be an RS485 adapter, there it is down there and this is the, the bus cable coming through here and it, it terminates uh, in the RS485 adapter there so I'm going to add my monitor node on the very end of the RS485 bus just to allow for maximum errors uh, so I'm going to have to uh, recable this, put splitters on the uh, on the end of the ground and the end of these two bus cables. Bring a couple of droppers effectively down from the bus into into the RS four eight five adapter. Then extend the cable a little bit further on so I can put my monitor Arduino right on the end of the bus. I've brought that little test set up, up into the loft now, so it's sat on the RS-485 bus up here. Um, it's not an official node, if you like, it doesn't really have an address, it's, it's, not, it's not set to receive instructions and JMRI, CMRI are not aware of it, but it's just sat on the bus monitoring all traffic and it'll report all set instructions that it sees, the address that it was intended to and the data that it received. So it should help me debug when I click on a set of points in JMRI, what's happening to that data after it leaves JMRI and hits the RS-485 network. It's all plugged in, it's grounded, it's on the common ground and it's plugged into the, end, the, the extended new end of the RS-485 bus, USB into the, the, the computer, the desktop computer that's in the corner. So I've got this screen set up now. Down the, the left is where the logs will appear, that's just the very side of the Arduino log. And here is the remote control of the Raspberry Pi, which is um, actually controlling, uh, which which has CMRI, JMRI, and and the uh, the the start of the RS four eight five bus connected to it through that US USB adapter there. So all the nodes are on. Just time to run JMRI and see if I can spot anything. Going to get Panel Pro running then. And it'll be interesting to see when these set instructions, right, okay, there's, there's stuff appearing down there already. Not much data, so it looks like it just sends some set instructions out when it first starts up as part of the, I don't know, part of the init, I guess. All four nodes have been recognised, but it still seems a little bit... Uh, they've, you see, they've gone again now, so I wonder if I've added some... That's interesting, if adding this node has added some noise to the network, because the, the, the top four...
well, it's all gone back to how it should be now. And I know there's some kind of issue on there, so I'm not going to get worried about any evidence of it. So we've got all these post ambles. I'll have to try and edit the code and get those out of the way. Um, so it sent a set to address two, which are the ones that just moved, but I don't know. This is interesting because I'm not clicking anything here and it's sending set instructions and it's changing points on its own which suggests that the maybe some of the micro switch config isn't right or whether it's receiving strange information back it's continually deciding that it needs to change points I can see the set instructions going out on RS485 So in my head now, when I imagine editing that video, I think I'm probably going to uh, fade out that last um, recording I made at some point where I was monitoring the the actual um, traffic on that RS-485 bus with everything worked. Uh, I didn't get anywhere with it and I found it just overwhelming that amount of data. So the things to take away from it were the quality of the RS-485 data appeared to degrade or the quality of the bus appeared to degrade when I added that fourth node onto the, the bus because that, that first node, the four uh, black dots across the top, um, that wasn't timing out before. I wasn't getting any timeouts before I added that, that monitoring node. So it, it looks like, for whatever reason, adding that fourth node has degraded the quality of, of the bus. And that, that was uh, apparent both in the timeouts of those four dots at the top an unresponsiveness generally of, of those four sets of points and the fact that I could change a set of points on another node and it would take a good five seconds before the logging console actually um, recognised and, and reported that command and that doesn't seem right either so there are definite um, issues I would not call that a healthy RS485 bus um, so there are definitely some interesting things to investigate. I decided to simplify things because that that um, that live GMRI profile is full of feedback sensors, and and obviously the, with there being data timeouts, the feedback sensors were getting confused. GMRI was deciding it needed to change sets of points on its own. I was getting those appearing in the log, which was just confusing me. So I've created a test profile. This is up in the loft. This is the loft Raspberry Pi. I've created a test profile uh, with just a few sets of points and a couple of lights on it and three the three nodes recognizing the, the, the three nodes that, that are actually up there um, uh, but none of the um, in-depth config that the actual live uh, profile has so the way it's configured it was kind of up there imagine this this uh, window is the is the loft the um, the computer and the Raspberry Pi are up in this corner and then RS-485 bus comes out of the Raspberry Pi all the way around the loft right back into the monitoring uh, um, Arduino which is right next to the PC and connected to it via USB so the idea again will be similar to how it was down in the office when I click a button so an instruction gets sent instruction comes out of the Raspberry Pi goes all the way along the RS-485 bus past the three existing nodes back into the fourth node which is just a monitoring node through the USB cable into the PC and appears on this this log here so anything that appears on this log here has gone right the way around the RS-485 bus uh, and back into the, the PC so I've got a few tests set up a few test turnouts and, and lights and I'm just going to test um, and there's an obvious improvement in responsiveness and quality on this test profile compared to how it was on my, my live JMRI layout profile. Nothing is getting missed. Instantly I'm getting a response in the logging Arduino on that, that, that logging sketch um, which corresponds to the instruction, absolutely corresponds to the instruction that I'm, I'm sending from, from here. So this suggests that there might not be an issue with the, the um, the cabling although of, of course this is a very low amount of data there are no sensors uh, set up on on this this profile so there are no poles there's very small a minute amount of data going around that that um, cable compared to 
or how it is on the the main profile which has a load of sensors as soon as SIMRI knows there's a sensor attached to any node it constantly pulls it for uh, status um, and receives a, a response as well it's a number of times a second so um, if uh, as there are no sensors on this profile CMRI knows there are no sensors on any of the nodes and therefore it's not sending out any polls whatsoever um, and uh, at least I don't think it is I think that will be um, uh, demonstrated on the, the, the monitor there it is so there's nothing going out and if I go back to turnouts what I should see when I click these now is this will log that the instruction was sent and this will log that the instruction was received and yeah that's um, obviously what's happening so with a very small amount of data this network seems to be or this bus seems to be working correctly the other interesting thing to uh, observe as well is that all of the TTL modules are switched off the three Arduinos that are the 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 RS485 nodes in the loft are all currently switched off so it'll be interesting to see how this behaves when they're all switched on again and see if any of them are actually introducing chatter and rubbish onto the network and slowing things down because I, I do think that they are capable of doing that when I do get them switched on as well um, they should respond to these turnouts because these are actual addresses so the first I've put the first couple of turnouts on each uh, on each board into here so they should respond to these instructions and I should be seeing turnouts change but because there are no feedback sensors attached to them or anything like that it's a much simpler operation and uh, that's the next step to see if, if uh, that's efficient as well. Back up in the loft then, on the same PC, except I'm not remote controlling it from my office now, I'm actually physically up here. And that's just because I'm probably going to start testing turnout soon and I want to be able to actually hear them if they move. So, same thing, I'm going to open up Panel Pro. Go for my test profile. So it's done a few sets to start with, one for each node by the look of it, but everything's still nice and quiet. It won't really have set anything because I haven't actually opened my config yet, so oh, that should must those sets must just be a little bit of chatter as it starts. But I now have my start with lights. Lights don't actually exist, they're, but they're just there to test for instructions so let's see what's happening on here now this is with everything oh something's just moved on its own but the scripts the sketches on the arduinos on the the nodes aren't really designed to have such a simple um jmri test setup attached to them so it might be the odd bit of strange behavior but here again with everything switched on i'm getting no noticeable performance issues let's see if the turnouts will move, I haven't tested this but let's see oh yeah Again, the same randomness. And well, I've only moved one, only sent the instruction for one set of points. There are no feedback sensors, and points have been moving all over the place. Getting nothing from that one, but it might not. Oh, so I ignored it a few times, but that's okay. That's just it syncing up. Instant response and board two's been the trouble one, so this will be interesting. Again, a couple for it to sync up to where it is. But this time, right, 
That's board. That's node one, which is the far left corner one. Far left corner is behaving itself. Near left corner it's behaving itself, but the trouble corner may still be where the problem is. Oh! No, this is node 2. So this is where it was all timing out before. I can see from the log instructions are being sent out onto the RS-485 bus but they're only being very, very rarely responded to by the Arduino, by the set of points. So obviously now my f absolute first job is to swap the TTL module on that node and see if we improve things. Here I am back at the computer then. I thought I would try something interest, I, interesting. I suspect that the TTL module on the node that was playing up might be playing up and I was pretty confident that the TTL module on the monitoring node was working okay because that was responding to everything. So I've swapped the two TTL modules. So if the theory is correct, now the node should be responsive and, and should recognise every set of points change, but the logging should be intermittent and should miss some instructions. So let's see if I'm right. So back here, the login's cleared, and here are the, the three, four turnouts. This is the one that was causing trouble on node two. Well, the set of points sounds more responsive. And the login missed that. Look at this. I'm changing sets of points and the login is missing almost all of it. The node that was dodgy is now working perfectly. And the logging is only recognising it occasionally. Let's that on board one. So I have a theory, and I did record it earlier, and I wasn't going to include it in the video because I thought I was wrong, but now I don't think I was. I think what's happened here is I've been messing around. Everything worked fine. I've been messing around down on that corner node and adding those infrared sensors, and I've caused pressure onto that USB casing, and I've shorted out the Arduino and the shorting out of the Arduino has damaged the RS485 module that was on that Ardu Arduino but I haven't realised that I've done that straight away so I've either left it powered on or I've turned it off and turned it on again classic fix it approach but what's happened is that broken RS485 module has then been I don't know, sending so much data and rubbish onto the RS-485 bus, it's actually broken the other two RS-485 TTL modules on the other two nodes. Because I had issues down at the, the, the other corner, and that was the bit that I made the video about. I was pretty sure that was causing problems. And when, when the performance was really bad, I changed that node and performance improved, but improved a bit. And even when it had improved a bit and it was almost working, the occasional instruction wasn't getting through. And that must be because there was still one dodgy RS-485. 
adapter on the bus, which was the one that, that I've just replaced or swapped. So technically there is still one Dodgy RS485 adapter on the bus because it, I, it's now attached to this monitoring station. So now the theory has to be, if I switch off this monitoring station and start everything up with the proper profile, everything should be, should be working again. But the lesson to take from this is sometimes, and I've kind of been working towards this conclusion, sometimes one of those RS485 or TTL modules, they're not always completely working or completely broken. There's sometimes some middle ground where they're a bit broken. And when they're a bit broken, I suspect they disrupt the whole RS485 bus. And give the impression that they work because sometimes they respond to instructions. Sometimes they do manage to pass the correct set instructions on. And sometimes they do manage to respond, send responses back from the Arduino. But at the same time, they're also malfunctioning. And in malfunctioning, they're disrupting the whole RS485 bus and making everything look broken. Well, this is the layout started up. It started in a bit of a random mess, which is unsurprising because everything's been um, moved. Each set point's been moved randomly. So first thing I'm going to do is try a bit of tidying up and see if I get full responsiveness as I try and get it to a standard state. Okay, not a single failure. Now I guess it's time to start setting routes and running trains. Well, it turns out that there are some tracks above sea level in here. It's not all wires up in this loft. And on those tracks occasionally do run trains. I'm still at the very start of the testing, but every route I've set so far has worked. So I'm just going to spend a little bit of time with it now, get trains parked in their bays, get other ones out, and just make sure that every set of points sets as it should, so that hopefully I soon end up having trust in the whole thing again. I might be starting to develop a little bit of confidence in this. I've had a few trains in, a few trains out, and they've all done what they were supposed to do. So I thought, put it to the acid, acid test, see if I can do it while I'm filming. So there's a super sprinter doing the rounds, it's just gone past me. I'm sat in my little happy place in the middle of the loft. There's a super sprinter doing the rounds, there it is, and it's running on the anti-clockwise line and what I call the through line there. The through line goes through the yard going through the fewest sets of points possible and with the kindest curves possible whereas all of the, the kind of the parking bays where uh, trains would come in slowly have a little bit more of a, uh, a route to navigate let's say. So I'm going to try and get this super sprinter, not this lap because it's a bit too close now, but I'm going to try and get this super sprinter parked I'll put it near side, it'll be interesting, so I'm going to put it behind the Swallow Class 91. So as it comes round there, I'm going to start working on it now, so I'm going to click on Roots. And I've got this anti-clockwise, line one lowest, make sure it's through at the top. So I have to trust now that that's been set, both sides. When I set those routes, they set both sides, so they set that line as a through line, although it obviously can't be a through line uh, because 
there's something else parked there, there's the, the class 91 park there. So it's do, it's coming round now, let's see how far it stretches round. Let's slow it down and see if it comes in and parks where it's supposed to park. Brilliant. Try avoid a bump, but just. So now, now this is actually quite an unreliable train, so I'm not entirely sure how well this is going to work. There's a class 40 BR parked over there somewhere. And so I want to get that out. I think it's on line one, two, three. So I'm going to come down here to my routes again. And it's on anti-clockwise line three, which is that one. So again, I need to absolutely trust. Now, nothing might happen here, and that'll just mean because the train stalled. But with any luck. We'll see something come out. So I'm going to start driving it. Let's see if there's any movement up there. Give it a bit of a bang. Well, I think there's something moving. So that's obviously coming out on a different line to the one that the Super Sprinter went in on. Out it comes. Oh, that was successful. It does often stall on this corner, actually. I've never quite worked out why. It's not the smoothest. There we go. So I'm quickly now going to get the through line set so it can go at a decent speed which is that one so this time it shouldn't go back into the bays it should come round on that wide one the other side of the yellow screwdriver and there it goes that's kind of what I mean by confidence in that as I go to automation I'm going to have to have confidence that when the layout says it wants to change a points, set of points it's going to change a set of points but from my point of view, and I'm kind of just down here having a bit of fun, I want the confidence of just being able to sit here, press those buttons, and know that a train comes out. I don't know if I go back down to this side again. I don't know off the top of my head what all those sets of points are and which ones need to be set to get which train out. But I know that if the train's on anti-clockwise line three, I just have to set an anti-clockwise line three route, and out it comes. But obviously I need to be able to trust that the perhaps six, seven, eight sets of points that get changed to get that train out will change and there won't be one that doesn't. Because on the anti-clockwise lines, if one of these doesn't change, then there's probably going to be a shunt because it's going to end up running at the back of that super sprinter. And if there's one at the other end doesn't change, it's going to end up shorting or derailing because it's going to come the wrong way over a set of points. And either the frog's going to be the wrong polarity or it's just going to end up derailed. But this, I have to say, is looking positive and uh, I can perhaps focus next on the mess. So I've had a good evening's testing. I've had everything out, all these routes tested, tested, tested again, and everything is behaving as it should and responding. So I feel like I kind of maybe went to a lot of effort just to prove what I already knew in that it's always does 485 modules but at least I've got a bit more confidence that it is those 485 modules now and they're cheap pound each from China there's bound to be some failures so I think I'll just keep going swap them when I need to swap them but I'm pretty confident that that's, uh, that's what it is now.